I want to tell you a story and it's to do with the day that's in it. Every year this date rolls around and in the Western world, it's a significant one. We're human beings and we're fallible and some things just resonate more than others, especially if you were alive on September the 11th, 2001. On this date, I always like to take a little moment, whether it's by myself or on the channel, to reflect in my own way. For many of us who never witnessed something like that happen, it changed our world as we knew it. It made us never feel the sense of safety we once did before what happened on that day in 2001. And this year, I'd like to tell you guys one story about an Irish American man who lost his life that day. His story resonated with me on a lot of levels, particularly when I visited the memorial site and I went on to go down a rabbit hole of looking up videos and reading articles and today I just wanted to share that knowledge base that I have of reading those with you guys. This is the story of Mihal Judge, or as he was affectionately known by his friends among the fire department of New York, Father Mike. He came to be known globally as victim 0001. 68 year old Michal was born on May the 11th, 1933 in Brooklyn, New York. This was around the same time as my own grandmother was growing up there. I wonder did they ever cross paths? Like her, he grew up in a working class Irish Catholic family. The son of immigrants, his mom and dad had actually met each other on the boat on the way over to the USA in search of a better life. They were married in St. Michael's Church in Brooklyn and fittingly they called their child Michal or Michael. It was a true American love story. From a young age, Michael felt a calling to the priesthood. Pretty much every Irish Catholic family around this time, right up until the 80s, had its own priest or nun in the family. Michael was a little torn though. He also felt like he wanted to be a firefighter. Later in life, he remarked it was a blessing that he got to achieve both of his blessings at once after being appointed the chaplain of the New York Fire Department. Side note, Father Mike took great pride in his appearance. He absolutely loved his fire department chaplain's uniform. The boys there would often tease him that the ladies were checking him out in his uniform and he would joke back that it was too bad he'd already devoted his life to God. And that's what young Michael did. He made the decision to join the church. Michal joined the Franciscan Order, a Catholic religious community known for its dedication to poverty and service. This was very apt because throughout his life, Father Judge was known for his deep compassion and commitment to helping those in need. But Father Mike's relationship with the church itself was a complicated one. You see, he believed devoutly in the word of God and he believed he had a direct line of communication to him. He, however, did not agree with some of the rules that came down from the higher ups. There are documentaries here on YouTube that are very much worth checking out that put a focus on Father Mike's apparent sexuality as well as the people who were in his ministry. But I believe looking at those two things singularly doesn't give you the full picture of who he was. We need to take into account the bigger picture. You see, Father Mike believed indiscriminately that everyone was loved by God. And that was how he practiced his ministry. At the height of the AIDS epidemic, Father Mike would go into the hospitals and read the last rites, as well as providing comfort to anyone who asked for it, regardless of their religion, sexuality, or political ideation. He just wasn't about that. He took the person he found standing in front of him. He spoke to grieving parents at funerals during the AIDS outbreak about how proud they should have been of their children, something that just wasn't said at that time by priests. And while a lot of what he said and did was in direct defiance of the official rules of the Catholic Church, Father Mike was just so charming and acted so gracefully that he pretty much got away with it. Of course, there were higher ups who gave out to him now and again, but overall, the community just embraced him. And it's very hard to kick out a person who's so beloved by every member of their community. Now, I want to paint a broad picture of this man who has become known as the saint of 9-11, that he was not holier than thou. He never acted like that. He was a flawed human being. While he served in various parishes and ministries, Father Mike was not one to take things lying down. He didn't join the priesthood for a quiet life. He loved a bit of pester power, did Father Mike. And if somebody told him no, he would get on the phone until he got the thing he wanted for the person in the community that he wanted that thing for. His friends were also emphatic to point out that Father Mike was no Holy Joe. 
There was one man who remarked that when Father Mike walked through the doors of the hospital to see him, he said, oh no, I'm a Lutheran. And Father Mike just joked back, that's great, I love a Lutheran. His personal and professional focus was on the marginalised and vulnerable among his community. He was especially dedicated to homelessness as well as people struggling with addiction. He even co-founded a homeless shelter in New Jersey. In 1992, Father Mike was appointed the chaplain of the New York Fire Department and he found himself fitting right in with the lads. This role allowed him to minister firefighters and their families providing spiritual guidance, counselling and support. He was widely loved and respected by all the members of the fire department, not just the people who were Catholic. He was always on hand with good non-judgmental advice. He was there as a friend when anybody needed somebody to talk to. He had that Irish wit and humour about him too, of course, and that ability to have a joke at his own expense or tease his colleagues. This was what made him so beloved by everyone in the community. On the morning of September the 11th, 2001, Father Judge was at St. Francis of Assisi Church, which was located just a few blocks from the World Trade Center. When the terrorist attacks occurred and the first of the Twin Towers were hit, most people were naturally getting as far away from the scene as they possibly could. A friend ran into Father Mike and advised him of what was going on, and Father Mike immediately rushed to put on his fire department chaplain uniform. Actually, one of his friends added this to the story, and I just think it humanizes him so much. As I said, Father Mike was proud of his appearance. So he jumped up, got his uniform on, and I have to say this in case you really think he's perfect, he did take time to comb and spray his hair. <laughs> Once on site, he joined his friends, the firefighting heroes who were rushing into the building to save as many lives as they could. On scene, he was met by Mayor Rudy Giuliani, who asked him to pray for the victims and for those still stuck inside the burning towers. Father Mike was advised to stay a safe distance from Ground Zero, but he said that no, his friends needed him. His focus was on providing comfort and spiritual solace to the wounded and dying, as well as the firefighters and first responders who were risking their lives to save others. On site, he prayed with them, heard their confessions, and gave them words of encouragement. His presence was a source of strength during the chaos and devastation of the day. Tragically, as Mihol continued to minister to the wounded and weary, the South Tower of the World Trade Center collapsed. There are mixed reports about whether Father Mike was struck down by a woman who fell from above or simply debris. But his friends rushed to his side and carefully removed him from the rubble. And using a makeshift stretcher, they gave him an escort from the scene. It was this iconic image that was published front page across newspapers internationally and is one of the most remembered from that day. Although the picture has been widely distributed and is very easy to find on Google, it just didn't feel right for me to share it here. Instead, I just want to show these happier images of him in life. He was rushed to a makeshift nearby triage area where sadly his injuries proved too much. His death was recorded as the first official casualty of the 9-11 attacks. At this point, some members of his community moved him into the church where his body lay on the altar. As the devastation continued to unfold, his peers and strangers found themselves in the church. It was said that he looked so at peace. Father Michael Judge's life and actions on September the 11th, 2001 continue to be remembered and celebrated as a symbol of courage, compassion and sacrifice. He represents the many heroes who emerged in the face of tragedy and adversity on that fateful day. His legacy lives on through various memorials, including the Father Michael Judge Walk of Remembrance in Manhattan. As I said, there's lots of documentaries about him here on YouTube, including one called The Saint of 9-11. It's said that he would have found that title pretty funny. It's fitting that while he was alive, Father Michael reflected on this thought. Life, life and death, it's so valuable. And you wonder when my last half hour is going to be, or my last hour, what will it be? Will it be doing something for someone, trying to save a life? Contrary to my normally bubbly disposition, I'm actually quite cynical about humanity and human beings, but beautiful stories like this one make me feel that there is good out there in the world. That when there is a crisis, a real crisis, your political ideation, religious affiliation, whatever club you belong to, it doesn't matter. 
good people come together for each other. It's this type of humanity that I think we should reflect upon on this day. It's stories like this that highlight the good that is out there despite all the powers and groups that try and tear us apart. I think that if there is a heaven, as Father Michael believed, he would undoubtedly be standing at the gates welcoming all of the victims of that day indiscriminately into the afterlife. Father Michael Judge's story serves as a poignant reminder of the extraordinary acts of kindness and bravery that can emerge in the darkest times from humans and he remains an inspiration to people around the world. If watching this video today was your one moment of reflection, I'm glad to have shared it with you. And we'll go forth and hopefully think people are less sucky when we think about people like Michael Judge. That's it for today. See you guys on the other side. Bye.